Hello? This is playing. I think it's playing. It's recording. Okay. Cool. Alright. So, my name is Kiara, and is Mike. Mike. Uh, and we're interviewing you on the 30th. <laughs> uh, will you spell your full name? S A R A H. E D M I S T O N. Do you consent to having this interview recorded and made available publicly? Yes, I do. Begin the interview. So, you already saved your full name. Um, if you don't mind sharing, where were you born and in what year? Uh, Johnstown, Pennsylvania, 1983. Please tell me a bit about your childhood. So, where did you grow up? I grew up in Belsena, which is right outside of Evansburg, Pennsylvania. Did you have any siblings? Yes, I have a older stepbrother or half brother, uh, older brother, and a younger sister. Wow. Um, what were your parents' names and occupations? Uh, David Edmiston. He was self-employed, and Nancy Edmiston. Uh, she was a homemaker. Um, tell me about your education as a child and as a young person. What was a typical day at school like for you in elementary? Uh, I went to Catholic school from grade school and to high school. Um, typical day, yeah, general ed classes. Um, what about high school? Uh, again, Catholic school with Bishop Carroll in Evansburg. General, nothing too exciting. Um, who had an impact on you? Was there anyone specifically? Um, probably my siblings, obviously spending a lot of time with them. My grandparents live across the street from my mom, so I spent a lot of time with them. Section four. Childhood and high school sports, because this is a sports class. Sure. Um, so what kind of sport participation were you involved in as a child? So I have an older brother, like I said, and in my neighborhood it was mostly boys, so there was a lot of baseball, football in the backyard all the time. Um, my brother played sports in grade school, and I remember going to his game and wanting to play from the instant of watching his first basketball game. So in third grade, you were allowed to play basketball, did that. They had bowling on the like weekends for grade school. Um, I would actually played Little League when I was in grade school on an all-boys team, and that kind of started all of that. Nice. At what age did you start playing a formal sport? Uh, third grade, so what was it? Nine. What was it? Uh, basketball. Did anyone, uh, anyone or anything influence you to start playing? Uh, yeah, the boys in the neighborhood, my older brother, since they all played, you know, of course they need an extra player, so there I was. <laughs> um, what was your involvement, involvement like throughout your childhood? So, like, how often, what kind of team um, did you like, your, did your friends play? Um, basically, like, my friends... Like, I graduated with 16 people out of eighth grade, so, like, it was mostly people, like, my friends played basketball. We all played basketball together, so, and it was, like, a parochial grade school league at, that ended up playing at Bishop Carroll, so, actually, not only did I make friends on my grade school team, but of the other grade schools as well. So. Um, tell us about your coaches. Um, like... Grade school, they were mostly just parents that kind of knew <laughs> what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, not many of them really had like a lot of experience themselves, so it was just them trying their best and introducing you to the sports, be it basketball or baseball or anything like that. Um, even in high school? Uh, in high school, I mean, we weren't like I played softball and basketball and volleyball in high school and. Our teams were never that great. Like I played freshman year basketball, but you know they were a little bit more involved. Like they may have probably played in high school themselves, but it's not like they were great coaches. But you know, yeah, they had fun doing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
What kind of support did your parents provide? My mom made every game I ever played in all the time. Um, my dad, being self-employed, worked a lot, but like um, probably in like high school when I was playing with travel and softball, they were there every weekend, all the time, watching games. Um, you know, always there to support me and cheer me on. Um, describe the significance of sports in your community. Like how how did how did your community see sports? Uh, I don't know. It seemed like all of my neighbors and everyone that I knew played a sport of some capacity. So, you know, it was kind of the gathering, especially of the kids. Is when we hung out, we were typically playing some type of sport, be it football, basketball, baseball, anything. So, you know. So it's heavily embedded in your. Or you were yeah. Up. yeah. Um, describe the relationship between your family's economic position and sports, if any. So, how did um, money play a role in sports? I mean, I, I have to say that I was fortunate. I didn't have top of the line bats or anything growing up, but you know, if there was a tournament and there was a fee associated to it, my parents would either fundraise or find a way. You know, to travel when we would travel, like to different states or anything like that. There was never a time that I was said no because of money. And I did play with people that, you know, it was harder on their families that they couldn't afford to just fork out the money for them to go. So, yeah. you know, other p parents pitched in to help so an entire team would be able to show up. So, let's talk about your attendance at IUP. Um, when did you attend IUP? I came to IUP as a sophomore. My freshman year I went to school in New Jersey and on a softball scholarship and did not like it there very much. So I uh, decided to come to IUP my sophomore year what in 2003. Yeah. <laughs> um, were you recruited? What other schools recruited you? Uh, I was recruited for softball when I was a freshman. Um, I don't believe IEP was one of them. There was a couple different schools, um, but after that, I kind of left softball and didn't even attempt to try to play it at IEP. So for rugby, it was yeah recruited by friends. <laughs> yeah. No financial uh, gains of any sort. <laughs> yeah. Um. Why did you decide to attend IUP? Uh, it was close to home. I had a lot of friends going here that all just loved it. Um, the summer before I actually transferred, I came with a friend here and met some of her friends which were on the rugby team and they were just the nicest and coolest people and I knew this is where I wanted to go. Uh, were you the first person in your family to attend college? No. My older brother did, so. Um, what did you study at IUP and why? Uh, criminology and sociology. Uh, I thought it was interesting and, you know, all the classes were interesting. Yeah. Um, did you have a particular course or professor that you most enjoyed? Who and what was it and why? Uh, I can't really remember the specific course, but uh, I know criminology classes were cool because it was so late, like you could relate to it and you could see how crime makes an effect on our community and our world. Mm -hmm. Is there anything uh, particular about criminology? Like, there's any any specific area that you are more interested in? Uh, not really. I don't know. Like, my job now, I do a little bit of, I don't know, like security, um, like the physical security, like the, like security in depth for a building and stuff like that. So, you know, like how having locks and lighting and stuff like that, like the setup of physical space. 
cool. Um, no professor that you... Not yet. Not really. I can barely remember the ones I have now. Yeah, no, I might be able to give you like two names, but... <laughs> um, what was it like playing rugby at IUP? Um, it was interesting because we did we didn't really have a coach, so it was led by the captains as coaches. So not only were they deciding what you were doing for practice, they were leading practice, then they were making decisions of who was playing in the games. And there's a lot of dynamics when you have 50 females of college age, <laughs> like balancing school, homework, work, uh, family and everything so it, you know there were times where it was tough decisions of what what do you choose because if you don't choose going to practice because you have this other thing it, you know it can make the dynamics a little difficult but mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely hard it is hard um, what was a typical day like uh, as a student athlete I worked a part-time job at Starbucks, so it was early mornings uh, working at Starbucks, then uh, going to class smelling like a cappuccino. <laughs> uh, class for the afternoon, then practices, then typically dinner with the team, back to the house for homework, and go to bed and do it all over again the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> um, what were your major accomplishments as a student athlete? I think just balancing everything, um, being able to maintain a part-time job, um, play, learning a sport that I had never played until college, and picking it up quick and being able to to balance all of that, and keep a social life, and still keep up with family and everything. So I think just being a student athlete I mean, in the context of what it is, it was an accomplishment. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so what was the most challenging aspect and what was the most rewarding aspect of being a student athlete? Uh, definitely challenging to just keep going when you're exhausted and it's work, class, practice, homework, and not much more and just doing that over and over again. Um, it can wear you down, and especially just dealing with so many different personalities that sometimes you don't get along with people, sometimes you want your space. <laughs> but, you know, you go out there and you practice and play every day, and you know, you get through it, you learn how to deal with that kind of stuff, which is beneficial for when you become an adult and have to go to work every day with people that you may not exactly. get along with. Exactly. Um, what was the other part the of the The rewarding. Question? Rewarding is, you know, the memories that were made, the friendships, you know, that was just, the people that I worked with at IUP, the people that I played with, I'm still friends with, and, you know, that's something that we'll always have IUP in common and we'll always have the memories that we made here. Mm -hmm. Gotta cry. <laughs> um, what was your experience like at IUP? As in, please describe what you recall about being a student in those years. Um, I mean, I feel like IUP has grown so much just driving through campus. Like, I don't remember these big buildings. Like, we had, I don't know, dare I say, like crappy halls and like no heat or too hot, like it was either 90 degrees or 5 degrees. Um, I don't know, I felt like I was here when it was still small, but I wasn't here that long ago. Yeah, it's a lot different. And it's changed a lot, and I mean, great changes and things that probably needed to happen a long time ago, but it's definitely different. And it'll continue to get to change, which is crazy. <laughs> Um, so what are some of the significant or memorable events that you experienced while you were a student? Um, can you recall any story you remember that would reveal the character of the school during your tenure? 
It's a long question. So, <laughs> so let's break that up. So um, any significant or memorable events that you experienced when you were here? Um, yeah, that second part's weird. Like a story, <laughs> like just something <laughs> crazy that happened. No, I, don't, I don't know that. Uh, Relating to being a rugby player. Um, like I mean, I think just as a team without a coach, uh, without funding from the school or minimum funding from the school, like making playoffs and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was right after I got here the team was nominated for Heroes of the Year through Reader's Digest, and although I wasn't part of that, just seeing, like, and hearing the stories of what these girls did on the way to a rugby game so selflessly, like, mm -hmm. helping people, pulling people out of cars, and, you know, actually seeing, you know, the recognition from the school, which felt like at the time wasn't happening often enough for what was ha like how the rugby team was handling itself coachless uh, playing so well um, I mean that was pretty cool and you know just to finally see this, the school recognize us because it seemed like in the past the school always thought the rugby team and I'm sure at the time like back in the day I'm sure the team was probably trouble mostly the men's team and you know I know they got themselves into the trouble around town and stuff too but it was cool to actually see some positive recognition. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What were your initial expectations in relation to being a student here? Well, as I said, I transferred here, so I was at a small school in New Jersey, and um, I don't know, just the the people there were not as friendly as people back home in Pennsylvania. So I was expecting to meet more people, like-minded people. And the other school was very small, not, not much diversity. So coming out of UP, I knew it was going to be a lot more like the college experience I had truly thought I was going to have when, you know, when I was in high school. So that definitely met that criteria of a ton of different people from all over. Yeah, it was great. diversity for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and so did these initial expectations um, accurately reflect what you eventually experienced? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And probably even more diversity than I had thought. Yeah. Just because I went to a small school not very far from here that was predominantly white, obviously Catholic school Catholics. So to meet people of different religions and races is yeah. definitely a met. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, so post-graduation, uh, what has been your relationship to IUP since graduation? <laughs> uh, still very close with IUP, um, help out with the rugby team fundraising as an alumni. I continue to talk to all the players I've played with. I've actually um, worked with a group that is formally like with the alumni office that does fundraisers, is a non-profit uh, fundraising for that. Um, I've worked with the alumni office prior to even that group of getting stuff out to hand out to players, getting names and email addresses for the alumni office. So still involved, helping out the team. Cool. Um, yeah, and you have those two Facebook pages that yep. we're all in. Yeah, the Facebook pages and donate money every month to the team and stuff. So. Yeah, it's really awesome. Um, okay, what have you done since graduation in terms of employment? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> so right after school, I moved down to Northern Virginia after my older brother and did loss prevention for the Gap for a couple months. And then I um, got a job at Lockheed Martin doing uh, security kind of went from there after I got a government clearance from 
a couple different companies doing um, industrial security, so basically um, Defense Department security um, in the D.C. area for about seven years. I came back, uh, moved to Pittsburgh for about a year and a half, did a similar job to that. Unfortunately, that company downsized after six months, so uh, actually interviewed for a job and the gentleman was an IEP alumni for a security manager, got that position and I know having that IEP connection definitely helped with that. Uh, probably was there for about six months and a job in Johnstown uh, came open, which at the time was really looking to move back towards home, so uh, I've been there for the past three years now, doing similar stuff that I was doing in D.C. So. Cool. Did your involvement in athletics influence your career? So did your involve, like did you being a rugby player at IUP have any influence on your employment? Oh yeah, I definitely think so from, from the beginning, um, even like right out of school, just saying that I was a part of the team, that I had a, like I was the vice president of the team, being able to add that to a resume, a lot of people were impressed when you can say, got a degree and I played a sport because they know that you can balance things they know that you know how to do teamwork um, and you you know with some positions you just have that connection with people that have played sports and know it it just helps you to kind of break the ice and be able to have a conversation about sports Did your involvement uh, in athletics influence your life in any other ways? So did you, being a rugby player, influence your life in other ways other than just employment? Yeah, I mean, when I moved down to Virginia, I found a rugby team to play to make friends because it's so hard when you're not familiar with an area. So I decided that's how I would make friends is play rugby. Um, and down there, there's so many people, there's so many teams, and you play on one team and you become friends with other people on other teams. You get to do some traveling, especially like at the women's level, like going to Chicago or Boston for a weekend to play rugby. That was definitely cool. Get to experience different cities, get to make new friends. Definitely the work connection. Um, always having events to go to, so definitely positive thing. Do you, do you still play or no? No. I uh, fractured my vertebrae, <laughs> so yeah. When did that, when did that happen? Uh, about six years ago. Oh, cool. And like I had had back problems and was playing women's rugby and was like, all right, this is really bad. Went to a bunch of doctors and finally figured out what it was and had back surgery about six years ago. So yeah. the playing days are done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really wears you down. Um, okay, are you? Oh, well, you just answered that. I said, are you still involved in sports today? So you don't play rugby, but do you do any uh, like? Um, I still pick up softball game. Oh. Tried to play basketball, which I realized that I'm no good at anymore. But really, anything, you know, adult kickball league or what yeah. have you. Yeah. And even just watching, and, you know, coming to the IUP rugby games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I enjoy watching. Like, not. I mean, I I know playing, but I really like watching too. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and do you keep in touch with teammates and coaches? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I get a motivational text from the guy's rugby coach every morning at 6.30 in the morning. He's mm -hmm. one of the ones that has worked on that nonprofit. Um, I run the Facebook pages for the women's alumni and just the IEP rugby alumni. Uh, talk to people, I met people that have started the team in the 70s for the guys, women who played in the 80s, you know, I met alumni when I was down in D.C. at an IEP alumni happy hour that played, so it just seems to always be running into people and always keeping in touch, especially, like, the people that 
I played with, like I've traveled the world with some of the girls on my team. We were roommates in college and after college, so it seems to be like a constant in my life. That's exciting, I know. Um, Cause I don't know, like after I graduate, I'm, all, I'm like, what am I gonna do now? Yeah. How am I gonna, like, what am I gonna do? Cause yeah, it's just good to know it's like a, an easy network. It's not like you have to go meet strangers and be like, I went to IUP. Like you automatically have a conversation like, oh, when did you play? What position did you play? Okay. And that just opens up the door to you know, getting to know each other. Yeah, when I, when I see a rugby player, I'm like, hey, yeah. you're one of us. <laughs> um, so do you have children? No. Um, well, if or when you do, uh, what role do sports, well, what role would you like to see sports play in their lives? Uh, I would hope that my children like sports. I mean, I don't feel like forcing them into something if they're not into it. Um, I've had friends that their parents made them take lessons for every sport, and it's just like if the kid's not passionate about it, you can't force them into it, but I definitely want them to try. Um, I feel like I'll be probably watching sports my entire life, so it will probably come easy for them to watch and want to play. But. Yeah, yeah. Just how like you said that it was around your neighborhood, yeah. and so it was it's easy. the natural you. thing to do. Yeah. Um, so, is there anything else you'd like to add to this interview? No. I think we said it all. Um, okay. So, thank you for your time and sharing your experiences with me and the IUP Oral History Project.